All right. Hi, my name is uh, Tripti Bhatnagar and I'm the co-founder of uh, Indie Meme. Uh, right now we are at the Angelica Plano screening Turup Checkmate and we have uh, the wonderful filmmakers with us who are part of the Ektara collective team who have directed the film. Uh, we have Puloma Pal and Mahin Mirza who are here to talk a little bit more about the film. So welcome. <laughs> All right. So tell us a little bit about your uh, trip to Austin at the Fest Indian Film Festival first, and then you know the journey here to Dallas. We are very excited to be um, here in Dallas, uh, just as we were in Austin. Um, Indie Meme has really uh, given, I think, a lot of uh, independent cinema. Uh, a screen, a space to uh, show itself, and uh, that for us has been the most special part of our trip. And uh, uh, other than that, I think that uh, it is very, very nice and exciting to see an audience that has come together to watch uh, cinema. Because slowly we are finding that uh, that kind of culture of watching films together, of watching cinema together, is kind of uh, tapering away with the coming in of technology where you can access uh, films and see it at an individual level. Uh, this initiative is very, very important because um, people are able to come together to watch films and that somehow for the film completes the cinematic experience. And uh, so we've been very excited to be part of Indie Meme. They've got uh, together, they've curated a lovely bunch of films. I think each one of them a gem. And uh, we've watched a lot of cinema which we hadn't been able to watch previously here at the festival. And uh, at Austin it was a three-day festival. At Dallas there is this, uh, this is a single screening of the group that is happening. So we are also very, very excited about that. And thank you so much for screening the film here. And uh, yes, so me and Puloma, we've come here to represent Turup and Ektara Collective. That is, uh, that is so wonderful. Thank you, Mahin. Um, can you guys talk a little bit about this unique concept of Ektara Collective? Uh, so Ektara uh, is a collective of, I wouldn't say filmmakers, but people from diverse backgrounds and skill sets who come together to make a film. Uh, we kind of get together once in one, one and a half years. Uh, uh, we pick a story that excites us collectively. Uh, we kind of try to bring on whatever skill sets we have and uh, come together and work out a film. So uh, the fun bit is that no one person gets to be the director. All of us are part directors and part doing whatever else right. is our primary responsibility. So in a sense, uh, always there has to be a sharp eye at the film still holding together, despite it not being one singular person's uh, you know, vision. But it is a group vision and I think the group also comes together on certain common grounds. For instance, we were committed to the idea of seeing certain lives and certain stories being reflected on screen lives that we lead and we are familiar with and uh, which we thought were not being represented enough in the mainstream media. So that I think keeps our vision together. Uh, also uh, like any you know group of people who do come together we have our differences but we always believe in sharing, discussing, seeing the end of it. So I think that process so far has kept us cohesive in a creative way and it also uh, and we always like uh, if I falter somebody else gets my back so <laughs> it's more fun like you know you feel right. less vulnerable working this way because you feel always that the group is empowering you and it is holding you together right, right. so that is the spirit of Iktara this is our third uh, film our first feature length film uh, the previous two films were shorter films and we do uh, lots of other things but yeah this is what what you said about you know the differences being there, uh, but that's what kind of tarash shows, right? Tarash te hai, jis cheez ko. So and uh, your in the film, it it's just exceptional. Like I said inside that, how you would never uh, imagine that this is a film touched by so many different viewpoints, because it has a single feel and a single thread and a single line that it follows from the starting to the end. So kudos to you guys for working in a group. I think it's just 
supremely excellent with the thing um so now the film itself talks about so many different things in the society you know the social aspect the political aspect the um uh, women empowerment and monica especially who's my favorite character um you know so much of dignity with the limited resources that she has um so talk to us a little bit about the film and the story and the characters who most of them are non actors i believe um and how did you find them and how did that come along together so um <coughs> the story actually came quite uh, easily because it's just out there this is what uh, the environment is in the country today the way the uh, socio political economic setup is uh, and what it throws up is somehow a micro it's is a microcosm that has come together in the film and uh, um i think that uh, also we uh, the writer of the story the uh, uh, rinjin who has written the script of the story is uh, is a uh, is is exceptional in the sense that she has been working with a lot of communities and a lot of social movements and in the past and uh, that has kind of come together and amalgamated in the characters and in the lives that they have been playing and uh, so uh, uh, like paloma was saying we all bring in our different skill sets so uh, so then uh, this the person who's writing the story has brought in uh, the writing aspect of this and then it was shot in the way that it was and what we've tried to do is we've tried to keep uh, uh, this story within the framework of where uh, of the location uh where where and chess is something that is played very very regularly at chakki choraha not just at chakki choraha and several parts of bhopal uh thoda sa maar peet wala game zyada hota hai uh, strategy wala kam hota hai but uh, but yeah people are very very passionate about it and if you were to just stroll down at any time of the day uh, any uh, season you will see people playing chess at chakki choraha and that is how the idea or the metaphor of chess uh found its way into the film because it was right there it was in the neighborhood and people were play- and when i say people i mean men then we're playing it all the time. women usually don't play i mean i've never seen women we've lived there for for a while now for more than 4 years and we've never seen a single woman playing there so uh but what we were interested in is to look at this space through the eyes of women uh so uh the way uh, lives interse- intersect the way people the conversations that ha- uh, go on around in the chess in what is happening in the chess game uh the way the chess game is set up and uh what we wanted to do is we wanted to bring in we wanted to see that but from the eyes of people who are not part of that so so actually the film is about three women and and the, uh by the end of the film we get to know who are the real players of the game and uh, each one has a different character a different nature and she and she puts into action a different set of moves altogether challenging the rules of the game uh, changing you know a question there an, a comment here uh, changing the way it's it's going on so uh, so that that is what was interesting for us because uh, these are really the heroes uh that we are looking for um it's it's a common people their wisdom the way they uh subvert uh, you know very very big things that are going to happen so and yes that was that was what we kind of uh, wanted to cover with this yes and i think in the fabric that you have woven in 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 that society through all those actors non actor actors at every single level of the social strata there is power play whether it's the women who are doing it or whether it is uh, the tiwari who is handling at his level and that's that's really interesting to see so one uh, question that comes to mind is did you learn how to play chess or you you already knew it and how did that go uh, so i think uh, there was a lot of i was one of the non chess players in the team and there was a lot of pressure on me to learn chess but i think as the editor of the film i felt that i am going to make this film communicate with a lot of people who do not know how to play chess All so right. i decided okay. not to learn okay but uh, but uh, of course i got a lot of help from other people who knew how to and that's a part of the teamwork right so uh, the games were always done with a whole bunch of people sitting around and suggesting for so this is 
the, these are the logical possible moves. So then that so is how... So you would set that entire game yeah. and the actors would learn it and then you would film that scene. Yes. Exactly. That's exactly how it happened. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> That's so interesting. Yeah. Okay. And so when I was putting the game back in the edit, uh -huh. the same thing would happen with me. So if somebody would guide me to say this is the design of the game. So I did end up learning chess by the end of it. <laughs> but I think it, I thought, let me do this without learning chess because ultimately it has to communicate with people who do right. not know chess. Right, so have, yeah. have you guys had a match since? <laughs> just I think just at the festivals, not, not really like a real. <laughs> I think none of us were very proficient with uh, playing uh, the game but yeah but we were very very interested in the way uh, the whole uh, chess scene was in uh, Bhopal in Chakki Jaraha and uh, uh, like like I already mentioned before that is what then formed the formed one of the main threads of the story that chess became a character in the film in the film yes and uh, but all the games are designed they uh, so actually uh, the the games that are being played are uh, games that have been played by grandmasters. The last game, in fact, is um, one that has been played between uh, Judith Polgar and Vishwanathan Anand, in which Vishwanathan Anand left the game by the third move. But no one knew why he left the game. But when you go on to play the game, you realize why he left the game. It was, it was something that he would lose. And and uh, for us also, it was important to have like a woman presence because chess is also a game which is not considered a woman's game. And so we chose that game for that that reason too. Yeah. Wonderful. That's uh, that that's really really nice to know. Now I know that Ektara Collective, you guys are uh, crowdfunded, and uh, so you work on your films periodically, and everybody has another life that they lead. Um, so how is it that you pull in all your resources for uh, getting the finances to firstly work on a project, and also what are the projects that you're working on? So, uh, so yes, I mean, one of the concerns also is uh, about like the amount of money that is going into making cinema today. Like mainstream cinema, it is just um, the way it is set up, the uh, kind of uh, resources that go into setting that up, uh, it, is, it is very, very high. And so if you think that as a people or a public, you can do the same thing, it's, you know, you have, but do we have the money to do that? So... Uh, so this is what we decided to do. We wanted to also um, uh, bring in the resources for making this film. We did not want any institutional funding. We did not want any institution to own up own this film. Uh, we wanted to have the ownership to to be broad based. So uh, we would go and we would ask people to contribute. People who we we know before from before, or people who we are in touch with, or people who are interested in our work. We would send out an emailer, and we would just tell them that uh, we are going to have another. The other thing that we decided to do was that we would not let people contribute above a certain amount. Okay. So yes, we had to work harder on our fundraising. And why is that? Yeah, that was primarily again because we did not want any singular ownership we wanted to do we wanted it to be plural like everything else in the film is so so yes so then we set out and we always encourage people to uh, contribute towards our work as much as they can because actually the people who are uh, doing the acting who are bringing in their technical skill do not take any money for this it is sure purely for the love of cinema and for doing it a certain way and uh, so uh, whatever money we collect it goes into our production into the equipment that we need and and we all really try to scrimp on that as well so that we can like keep it really tight and uh, yeah so on instruments on studios as mostly on on uh, equipment and on uh, food and uh, travel for uh, when the project is going on so yeah the upper limit is about 80 dollars uh, 80 to 100 I guess it will translate into that uh, and that is as much as you can contribute and if you want to contribute more you'll just have to ask your friend to do it. So if, uh, if people here uh, in the US and the ones who are watching uh, right now would like to contribute towards Ektara Collective if they like the film or you know where can they and how and where can they do that? So, mm, 
I think the best way to do it is to just write in an email and say that, uh, uh, and you can write the email to Ektara Collective at gmail dot com, and write in or just get onto our Facebook, which is also Ektara Collective, and uh, show interest that you want to contribute towards the firm, and we will send you all the details of the uh, bank and stuff like that, and then you can just send in your contribution. Thank you so much, Mahin and Puloma, for being here, and uh, thank you, Desi Plaza TV viewers, for giving us this opportunity to introduce these wonderful filmmakers in Dallas. Thank you so much.